Hi Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus, this is Dane, and I am going to be doing your July 2020 full moon reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and also to subscribe to my channel. Now before we dive into this reading, let's clear the energy here and raise our own energy vibration, getting rid of all negativity. We take a nice deep breath in, releasing that breath whenever you feel comfortable. Releasing out negativity like storm clouds from our nostrils and our mouths. Beautiful. All right. So I have everything that we need to know about this moon all laid out here. It is a Capricorn full moon. It is a Leo new moon. The full moon on August 3rd will be in Aquarius. So that is really quite powerful and really quite beautiful. So let's see what the tarot has to say before we dive into everything that we need to know. How will Scorpio be affected by the July 2020 full moon? How will Scorpio be affected by the July 2020 full moon? How will Scorpio be affected by the July 2020 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this message and show me clearly. What does Scorpio need to know? Spirit guides, guide this message. Angels, show us clearly. Oh, goodness, okay. So, this card first. Here. Then this one. Angels and spirit guides. Guide this message. Show us clearly. What does Scorpio need to know? I love how your cards are just jumping out or sticking to my hands. It's beautiful. Angels and spirit guides guide this message. Show us clearly. Show us clearly. And then these two. Awesome. Absolutely beautiful. There we go. Getting everything to fit. Fantastic. Okay, so this is your inner self, your personal self, your heart, and your public self, the way other people perceive you during this time. So we have the Four of Swords. The Knight of Cups, which is you, Scorpio, shining through your a water sign energy, represented by the cups in the Minor Arcana, represented by the death card, death card in the Major Arcana. Then we have the Six of Pentacles, and you have yourself represented in the Major Arcana with the Death card right here. So, innerly, inwardly, there we go, that's the right word, inwardly, you are astoundingly powerful, and you're finding balance between your Minor Arcana self and your Major Arcana self, okay, between... The you that you are in the realms of emotion, understanding, and idea. And the you that you are in the pure realm of being a Scorpio, in that power, in that truth, in that, you know, perseverance. Then we have the Ace of Pentacles. The King of Swords, an air sign energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. The Ten of Pentacles and the Queen of Cups. So you shine through again in your heart as a queen. So that is absolutely beautiful. You really are ruling your heart. You have the Magician, so you are definitely taking this gift of the Ace of Pentacles, the Nine of Wands, the Three of Wands, 
and the Seven of Swords. Yeah, there's some sort of agreement that you're coming to with your Scorpio self and your water sign energy self where I see it like the ebb and the flow of time kind of coming together. You might say that this is time and fate meeting each other. There's a beautiful dance that you are doing with the coming together of your soul, of yourself, of your power, of your understanding. And this is a time where you feel very connected, okay? Astoundingly connected. And what you're going to find is that this moon speaks to your very DNA, okay? This moon speaks to that profound connection that Capricorn brings to our elders, okay? To the archetype of our elders. And so here, there is this sense of a psychic bond with your ancestral self, okay? with your ancestors, with your, also your past life self. So you can find yourself drawn to certain cultures. You might stumble of you might stumble across, there we go, cultures that you never knew about before. People that you feel just drawn to. And this is because it's part of the past life you. Now during this time, you will also find that memories, ideas, you know, from those who came before in your family line are going to be very important or they're just popping into your head sayings that you never said before but that somebody in your family would have always said they're going to be coming out of your mouth and this is a very po powerful key for you to let you know that you're connected I'm so excited that it's almost it's making me stumble over my words because this is a time where yes we have more work and less play. You know, that's what Capricorn brings to the table. It's kind of like, be more serious. This is the most serious. This is the most organized, practical, methodical moon out there. You know, definitely. But this is also a moon that holds great power. And a lot of time we overlook it because we're too busy being practical. And I don't want you to overlook the magic here. All right? And the magic is, for me, the way I see magic is that connection with divinity that divine self moving us forward. And so here it says an end of a tough cycle approaches. Yes, of course it does. Because you're having this guidance come into you, not just from your world, not just from this earthly perspective, but also from your spirit guides, from your ancestors, from you know the archetypes, from your past life self. You're getting so much information that it enriches you. And when it says surrender to the divine, that's literally what you're doing. You are surrendering. You are sitting there and saying that, this knowledge is guiding you so much more than you ever thought it could. And that brings you a profound power, profound power as you move forward. Now, what's also really cool about this moon is that this is the second, okay? This is the second lunar eclipse. And so the lunar eclipse, the full moon eclipse, says that conclusions are within reach. But it also brings forward perseverance, okay? Accountability, you're going to be holding yourself accountable, you're going to be holding others accountable, and commitment. What are you committed to? Now, the accountability can be amplified in this full moon by it being in, by this full moon eclipse, by it being in Capricorn. Because it, when the moon is in Cap Capricorn, you're very goal oriented. You're looking at things you want to organize for long term goals. You, you know, this is a time where you're going to feel like it's a time to learn, it's a time to listen, it's a time to understand. It's also a time to be patient with yourself, to know that the beauty comes, the power comes, that you are ignited by your truth. And as it comes in, the thunder moon, right? So this moon is known as the blessings moon in the former's almanac. It's also known as the stag moon, all right? But in the queen of the moon cards, it's known as the thunder moon. It's that booming change, that thing that makes you jump and go, oh wow, pay attention. And the change comes. And here it's very interesting because it almost looks like she's fighting the change. She's like trying to move the moon. And that can, that can be what it feels like during this time. It can feel like you're trying to move the moon. Something that cannot be moved, that cannot even be touched. And you're trying to change its course. Or it's trying to change your course. Stay true to yourself. Change comes. Let yourself, that's okay. That's what I was seeing here with the water self and the Scorpio self. So the Scorpio self I see kind of much more defined, okay, much more kind of concrete. The water self is like water. It flows, okay, it goes, it, it becomes. So you have a very strong water presence within this reading. You also have a very strong pentacle presence, so the nourishing and the wands. You, you have this beautiful balance coming in of passion, desires, and what it is that you want. And you have 
this ebb and flow, okay, of you. And it's very powerful. It's very beautiful. And as you are looking at the conclusions being within reach, as you're looking at the changes coming, there's a part of you that's going to say, no, I have to stay. Like, I have to stay grounded to myself. And there's a part of you that's going to want to flow through everything, see everything, understand everything. You're going to have to find that balance. And it can be a complicated balance. I see it as a beautifully complex dance, okay, coming in. And it can be that complicated balance that you're looking at. But it's going to be a beautiful balance for you. It's going to be a beautiful energy for you. And now on the 20th of July, we move into the new moon in Leo. And this says confidence is your key to success. And it really is. Being confident, being assured. Now also note that at 1.55 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, okay, you have the, what is this, the void of course. There we go. Thank you. The void of course coming into play. And this says here, nothing will come of this situation. So nothing will come of the situation. Like things that you think will happen, they're not going to happen. It's like you're still, like you stumble, all right? So this is at 1.55 p.m. At 1.55 p.m., if you can cut off things from like 1.30 to 2.30, that'd be your best bet. But also if you just sit there and even just for the 10 minutes of, you know, 50, you know, you just don't do anything. You just sit there and you say, no. It's a time to sit, to be quiet, to drink a cup of tea, cocoa, coffee, whatever it is that you like. Do something astoundingly calm, just focusing on your breathing. If you could do that for that time, you will find yourself more centered because what happens is, you know, your confidence is key, right? And failures are felt very personally. It's like, oh man. So here, there's the sense of, it won't be a failure. It's just things, it's like thinking things are going to go one way. It's like thinking it's going to be blue and it turning out being, you know, yellow. It just, it's like, oh, okay. Like, you can go with it, yes. Will you be disappointed? disappointed? Yes, you will be. Yeah, it's going to be, and I, I know that's kind of trivial. The void, of course, is usually more than that. It's like papers not being signed when they needed to be, things not going right, you know, what you thought would come from a situation, just you're getting the exact opposite. So just be very mindful of that time period. Because as you embrace your confidence, as you embrace your power, you are starting new beginnings. You're seeing that this new moon in Leo is really bringing forth new beginnings, new passions, new powers, new understandings. You're walking through to a new world, a new world of self. I also see this as being astoundingly connected to the god Junos in Greek, Greek Roman, Roman mythology. There we go. The god Junos, who is the god whose name goes for January, was January is named after. And this is the god of beginnings and endings. And this is what you're going to see here, these beginnings, these endings coming in. And it's almost going to be like, yes, the light goes out, but the light comes back. And you can see things more clearly now that you've had the silence. And so this says a new start is coming because you're having a fresh and new approach. Janice is also the god of, of portals, of being able to move forward, of being able to move through things from one time period to another. Now also note, very good news, that on the 12th of July, Mer Mercury goes direct. So Mercury comes out of retrograde, which is wonderful. You know, even though this Mercury retrograde has brought up a lot of really needed things for people and was actually a very positive thing, even if it didn't seem like that, spiritually, personally, it's a very positive Mercury retrograde. And so you're going to find here that on the 12th, it comes out of, of retrograde, goes direct, and you're going to feel a lot calmer, okay, a lot more centered and not as on edge and being connected with the stories of your ancestral past, being connected with the stories of your your past life, okay? Once it comes out, once, you know, Mercury comes out of retrograde, you're able to hear those stories a lot more profoundly and powerfully. It can actually be a little bit overwhelming. So just kind of like have the 12th marked on your calendar because it can be that things start to become really intense during this time. Now on the 3rd of August, we have the full moon going into Aquarius. And this says here, show the world the real you. And it's time. It's time to stand loud and stand proud in yourself and in your power and in your understanding. But it's also going to take patience, Scorpio, because there are going to be things where you might not be comfortable or you might be second guessing yourself or you're thinking, oh, I should just jump. And you're, you know, you're like, jump. Your mind is saying jump and your feet are stuck. And so you have to be patient with yourself as you move forward, as you embrace 
what it is that you truly want. And now the spirit animals for this time. It's I don't have any of them in my cards, but they're really cool spirit animals, and these ones represent quite nicely. So the one that repeats for July and for August is the Salmon Spirit. Now the Salmon Spirit is absolutely beautiful. The Salmon Spirit represents rebirth, moving forward, happiness, eternal life, feminine. So femininity, it's just like, I'm just seeing like this beautiful kind of rustle of fabric, this flow, this kind of like a bit of perfume left on the air. That's how this femininity is coming around you. All right, so it's very sensual, all right? And it's very powerful for you. And as you're moving forward in it, this is you living your life to the fullest. This is what the seven spirit brings forward in us. Live your life to the fullest. Have this power guide you forward and fill your life with people and things that you love. It's kind of like you don't have time for the nonsense anymore. And so the nightingale spirit says here, love is all around you. And now what's really interesting about the salmon spirit is that you have the water coming in again. You are, of course, a water sign energy. And salmon swim upstream. And so at times you feel like you're fighting against the emotions of the world. But there's this power to you. There's this brilliance to you. Keep up the good fight. Seriously. Because in July, we have the woodpecker spirit. Now the woodpecker spirit is this sense of seeking, seeking passion, finding truth, you know, coming, coming back to your roots, coming back to what's truly important to you. And you're guided by that, by, of course, the elder connection, by your ancestors, by your past life self, by this power that is planted within your heart. And here, the brown bear spirit says, take time out. And why the bear stands in so beautifully for the woodpecker is that both defend against injustice. Both defend those who are weaker. And that's going to be a huge pull towards you. It's even defending the weaker parts of your spirit, of your soul, of yourself. It's kind of the Capricorn full moon makes us call out, you know, these aspects of ourselves. So you're going to see yourself standing in power, standing in understanding, you know, moving forward in that truth. And as you do so, the, of course, we have the seven spirit also being in August. And now the other animal for August is the cougar and the panther stands in for the cougar. And the cougar is leadership and it is taking charge of your life. It's really like, you know, sitting there and saying, this is my life, I claim it. And so the panther spirit says here, Reclaim your power. Reclaim your power. Know your truth. Know your prosperity. And move forward in that abundance. Because as you do so, right, as you're reclaiming your power, the first thing you need to do for yourself personally is rest. Because you're going to have this tendency to think, okay, well, sleep can go. You know, I don't need to rest. Or you might think, like, oh, I... it's like having a busy mind. Even when you're resting, you're not resting. So here with the Four of Swords, it's giving credit where credit is due. You've been through a war. You've been through a trauma and a drama. That's simply life. Life throws things at us that we could never expect, that we would never expect. And so here, it's resting. It's giving homage to all that you have been through, all that you have overcome. No matter how small, no matter if you think somebody would laugh if you told it to them, it doesn't matter. This isn't a contest. So often we think life is a contest, you know, and people treat it that way. Oh, you went through this. Well, you should hear what I went through. Oh, you didn't sleep well. Oh, you should see how I slept. You know, things like that. It's like, oh my gosh, please stop, <laughs> you know, and you're going to feel like that. Like, oh my gosh, please stop. Taking care of yourself, resting, connecting with spirit is going to be so important for you and to you emotionally. It then leads you to being able to defend Stand up for and defend what is really important. And it's really cool because knights are defenders of queens. So you have the knight here in your internal self, okay? And you have the queen here in your heart. So you are defending your heart. <coughs> Excuse me. Emotionally, personally, powerfully. You are seeing what it is that you desire. You're seeing what it is that you want. As a water sign energy, you are astoundingly connected to your heart self, to your emotional truth, to your emotional power. If you forget about this, you forget about a huge aspect of yourself. Let it shine. Let your heart shine. Let yourself shine forward. Because you will be emboldened. You will be stronger because of it. And you're going to find that internally, okay, you, it's not that you're ready for a fight, but you're definitely not going to back down from one. 
if it comes your way. It's kind of like you are going to stand up for what's right, for what's true for you. You have this power. You have this determination. It comes from being a knight. Knights are defenders. Knights are the people who move forward. Knights are the ones who assess situations, you know, and that's what you're going to be doing. It's just going to be an instinctual part of you during this time. And there's also this balancing of the scales between your minor arcana self, okay? So kind of like the minor part of your personality and the major part of your personality coming together. So you are going to need to balance these scales this way. Yeah, I do see that as like there's something very powerful that is coming forward that calls for almost a duality of spirit coming forward. Like think of it as kind of like the Gemini's, the twins, like there's a twin aspect to you coming. And that could be why the King of Swords is coming forward because this represents an air sign energy, a Gemini, a Libra, and Aquarius. All right. Also the Libra with the balance, the Aquarius for the moon in August. So there's a lot coming forward with air sign energy. You can have, you have a very strong connection. It could be very strong within your chart. It could be a person that's around you, but there's a sense of your mind and your heart coming together which is beautiful because as emotional beings, we need to connect our minds and our hearts. We need to have that open conversation, that dialogue that says, I don't need to analyze everything or I don't need to go just off emotion. Either way, you know, becomes too extreme. I need to have that balance, that understanding, that beauty, that truth. And that's what you're looking for here. It's the seeds that are being planted, but it's also telling the world, you know, step back a little bit. I can't have everybody holding their hands out, demanding. No, I need balance, understanding, beauty, peace within my life. I need it first from me and then also from others. So as I move forward, I'm embracing this idea and this idea. And as you're looking at the balance, it's transforming you. And it has you stepping into your true self, which is the great equalizer. That's one of the things about you, Scorpio, is that you see an even playing field. Maybe not all the time. You might be sitting there and saying, oh, well, these people are definitely better than me and this and that. But there's this sense of, you know, the great equalizer, which of course is death, you know? And you're looking at things and you're looking at the truth of things. And that's why there's a mystery to you because it's kind of like, I'm not that impressed. That's, that's the sentiment here. It's like, I'm not going to be swept away in everybody else's trauma and drama and, you know, truth and allegations and this and that. I, I'm staying towards my heart, my soul, myself. And as you do that, as you're guided forward in that knowledge, in that understanding, you're unstoppable. You are absolutely unstoppable. And there's a kingdom in your world that only keeps on growing. Just think of Hades, okay? In, in Greek mythology, Hades was the underworld. Hades, the ruler of Hades, okay, Hades himself, he had an army that only ever grew and never diminished. And that is part of the power within you, okay? It only ever grows and it doesn't diminish. And you see things differently from other people because of it. Embrace that power. Embrace that truth. There's a transformation here within the mind, within the understanding. There's a sense of, see mountains within the heart right here? So people might think like, oh, you're, you're being cold hearted or you're being unmovable here. It's like, no, you just know your heart so well that it creates, yeah, this mountain, this truth, this power. Ace of Pentacles. I love that you have the Ace of Pentacles crowning your heart. I mean, it is like you are being handed a gift. And as you are being handed this gift, you are embracing your prosperity. You're looking at things more honestly. You're looking at what you want to plant. Money is going to be a real concern for you, not in a bad way, but in a way where you're just very conscious of it. It's like you need money. You need to make money. You need to move forward with money. And so that's just it, period. That's like part of life. And so as you're looking at things prosperously, you are getting gifts of wealth moving you forward. Now, it can be that you actually get a gift. Like there's... Yeah, there's something that like lightens your heart. You could be getting a gift from a friend. You could be getting like, you know, a check in the mail. Something like that may very well come. All right. But there's also a sense here of you being very serious 
about what calls to your heart, what calls to your soul, what seeds that you want to plant. And you've been looking at things differently because of this. But there's a gift of wealth that is going to be nourished and is being nourished by you, growing and gaining understanding, passion, power, and beauty. And as you have that coming forward, you have here the Queen of Swords. Now this is an air sign energy, Gemini, Libra, not Queen, King of Swords, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Okay, this is cutting through the bull. Okay, this is embracing your, your power, your truth. This is knowing what you stand for. The kings claim their throne. There's also a sense of stability, all right? So queens, think of it as like kind of like chess. Queens can move all over the board. Kings move slowly, okay, or have limited range. So as you're claiming what's true for your mind, as you're cutting through the doubts and the fears, as you're knowing your truth, your power, and your understanding, you will not be held back, all right? And it's for something so much greater than just yourself. It's for your kingdom. It's for the very essence of you. It's for all the use that you once were and all the use that you will be and all the people in this world that you will touch, all the minds that you will influence, you know, just by a simple word, word or a smile or a gesture. There's a power to you. There's also a sense here, especially with this, <clears throat> excuse me, with this gift of prosperity, there's a sense here where it's like, it's time not to be so nice. And your heart is knowing it. It's kind of like, I'm not letting people walk over me. I'm not, you know, being this lackadaisical person. I know what needs to be done. I'm cutting through the doubts and the fears. I'm moving forward in this power. End of discussion. I am might. And as you have this coming in, all right, you then have the Ten of Pentacles. Prosperity, success, bounty, beauty. Okay, this is wealth that lasts for generations. Now, it might very well be, you know, monetary wealth. Yes, but it's also going to be the sense of what you value as much as money, prosperity, beauty, understanding. There's a completion of a cycle. Something very important has been learned and is being learned during this full moon. You're seeing things more clearly. You are looking at like denials, doubts, fears, and you're calling yourself out. You're calling others out too. And it's like, no, no, we're getting things together. It, period, end of the discussion. And now I move forward in power. Now I move forward to the place that I'm supposed to be. And as you do this, you, we have here the Queen of Cups. We have you being the Queen. We have you moving forward with emotional truth, with this sense of, of caring, compassion, power, guiding you, this flow. Okay? So as you are connecting with this power, you have your foot in the water your foot on land. So you have the sense of your emotional and your practical self coming together. You're seeing it more clearly. You understand yourself more clearly. You're being anointed by these blessings. They're bringing you wisdom. And you're seeing that things, there's an eternal pattern, an eternal truth. And as you do so, all right, publicly, it's like you can achieve anything because, I mean, you're embracing your major arcana self, your inner true being, and you're embracing your minor arcana self, okay? The part of you that is very important, the heart, the emotion, the soul of it all, and it's coming together, and it's like you're unstoppable. You're seeing your magic. You're seeing your connection with divinity, your power of understanding, your passion of truth, your commitment of soul guiding you forward. Okay, you're claiming there's a very openness to the gesture in the Major Arcana, in, in the Rider Waite Smith deck, in the Major Arcana of the Magician, okay, with his arm, one arm up, one arm down towards the ground. So he's leaving himself quite vulnerable emotionally, spiritually, personally. And there's that saying, as above, so below, as you think it, so it becomes, as you pull in the power from the universe from the cosmos, from the ether, from the heavens, how, from, you know, above. It pulls through your body, going out your other hand, okay, grounding you to this earth, grounding you to the passion that you need to plant the seeds, to, you know, to water them, to, you know, have them take in the sunlight, to have the wind blow through them, for life to move forward. And it all comes through intention, desires, understanding, the sense of the elements coming around you, and knowing these elements and knowing these truths with determination, passion, and power. 
And as you do so, all right, it comes after you rest. So if you do not rest, if you do not take care of yourself, the gifts that the magician have to offer you will be, they won't be less, they will be harder to take in because there's going to be the sense of exhaustion. There's going to be the sense of, I'm just so tired, like seriously? Like seriously, I have to do this now. I have to embrace this power. I have to come together. I'm transforming myself. There's this sense of, you know, gold showering over you and like sparkling through you. Think of it as like being absolutely covered in glitter, but it's the light of, of creation around you. And that is going to be blissful. And if you are well rested and well grounded within yourself, that is going to be astounding, that feeling. Nine of Wands. First of all, you're triumphant, so let's celebrate that. Okay? You've defended. But the other part is, is it's that sigh right there. It's like, but I'm tired. I've worked so hard for this, and I've been working so hard for this my whole entire life. I am the oldest I have ever been, you know? Because each day we are, aren't we? And the Nine of Wands is like, do I have to fight again? I don't want a battle. I don't need this nonsense. And so you look at it really truthfully. And it's the world also coming at us. And my gosh, is the world coming at us, right? There's so much to take in. So much emotion just embedded around things. And so with the Nine of Wands, there's a sense of seeking our own counsel, of quieting out the world, of filtering it out, and being transformed by the powers of our own thought, our own action, our own self. And as you embrace this, you have the three of wands. You see yourself moving forward. It's like as you give yourself the respect that you deserve, you see your ships come in, you see new avenues of moving forward. It's like, I could do that. I could do that. And yes, it is kind of in the prep the prep stage, you know, but it is also in a truthful stage, in a stage of where you're like, wow, look at it come. And people are going to see that. People are going to see that, yes, there's a bit of a weariness to you, but there's also this stop. There's this powerful boundaries. There are these powerful boundaries. There's this powerful, you know, coming together of what you truly need. And it leads you to the seven of swords. And you might sit there and say, sneakery, you're like sneaking around, like what's going on? No, it leads you to gathering up your knowledge, your truth, and saying, they won't understand. Because seldom people do when we are doing things that are spiritually guided towards us and for us. So you're gathering up your knowledge, you're gathering up your understanding, and you're moving forward to what you truly want and where you truly want to be. And as you're guided forward, you're empowered, you're emboldened. You're leaving things behind. You are. You're leaving two things behind. It's like, I can't do this. I don't want those in my mind. That doesn't empower me. And you're also very guided by the truth, okay? For you here, the truth is going to be so important. Your truth to yourself, also your sacred wisdom, okay? Diving deeper, asking questions, finding deeper answers. That's going to be part of you during this time. And let's see. Let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. Let's see here. Ending messages for Scorpio. How will Scorpio be affected by the July 2020 full moon? Ending message for Scorpio. Oh, goodness. Okay. So there we go. So we have the Nine of Wands put itself right above the... Yeah. This goes, this goes here? Yes. Okay. Right above your personal self. So personally... And publicly, you have the nine of wands coming forward. You've, you've been through the ringer. You have. And they know it. People know it. You know it. And it's like, first of all, congratulate yourself. Again, congratulate yourself. Just like you need to honor yourself for the battles that you have been through. It's been a hard road. And you have been determined in your win. And you are moving forward in a win. And here you're taking away their ability to attack. It's like, oh no, I got this. And so keeping the rest of the world out and saying no more, that's going to be really, really, really powerful. Having this private, communal, 
powerful time with yourself is going to be able to change so much for you and move you forward in such beauty. And then we have, for your heart, the King of Cups. So I love that you have. And then, yeah, put itself there. The King and the Queen of Cups. Now, they're not from the same suit. Okay, well, the same suit. They're not from the same deck. So you have this soulmate beautiful connection, but there's like a separation between it. You're moving towards something gorgeous. Here you are fully connected. His feet are not in the water. So it's not being connected to your element as deeply as you would like to be. It's like you are ruling, but there is something more. More there. It's kind of like the king has to stay still. Again, think of him as a chess piece. The king does not have the free movement that the queen does. So there's part of you with your heart that knows this and knows the power, the dignity, the, you know, kind of putting down your foot and saying, this is truth. This is truth for me. And then there's this inquisitiveness. There's this butterflyness. There's this sense of floating on the wind and seeing so much more and being so much more and touching so much more than you ever thought possible. And I really see that as the queen here for you. There's something beautiful that's coming. It's like your life is like poetry, intense, with multiple meanings, you know, and deeper truths. Yeah, and that's a line from Morgenstern. So yeah, there's this beauty here. There's like this deeper world that you're going into. And then finally, we have justice. Yeah, Strong Libra presence within this reading. This is a time frame of September 23rd to October 22nd. Right? And there are some of you Scorpios who are cusp babies, you know, born October 23rd, which is the first day of Scorpio, kind of touching the Libra time frame. So give it like five days around there. So here you can have that impact of the Libra energy coming forward. And it's going to be very seen in your public self. Okay, there's going to be this need for justice. There's going to be this need for battle, not battling, balancing the relationships and the power of your relationships, the power of, of your truth. And it can be, it can seem like a battle at times for justice, but it's not. It's like justice is flowing over your life, becoming a part of you and guiding you forward in a very profound and very real way. And it's after feeling like you have to move forward from something. So it's like, as you move forward, as you take your swords, well, she has the sword of justice right here. It's like, yeah, you've got this. You understand it. And you're moving towards it with enlightenment, with the opening of your third eye chakra right there. Yeah. All right, so let's see what Luna has to say. How will Scorpio be affected by the July 2020 full moon? How will Scorpio be affected by the July 2020 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Ooh, goodness. Okay. So we have one. Angels and spirit guides, guide this message and show me clearly. How will Scorpio be affected? This one right here. Awesome. How will Scorpio be affected by the July 2020 full moon? How will Scorpio be affected by the July 2020 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, guide this reading. Guide this reading. And show me clearly. Show me clearly. How will Scorpio be affected? See what they have to say. You have the path, acceptance, and peace. Oh, <laughs> I love that. Wow, that's heavy. And it's beautiful. Surrender. Your hard work pays off. The answers you need are coming. A new romantic cycle begins. Hold your vision. 
balance spiritual and practical. Balance the spiritual and the practical. Okay, so I love this with your inner self. I mean, it is profound because what it says here, the path opens to you, right? And it seems extraordinary. It seems almost out of this world, right? It's, it's so great and it's so beautiful that you think, how? But there's an acceptance of your path. It's like, this is my journey. This is my truth. And as you accept this path, it brings you peace. It's like, oh, this is my calling. It's almost your vocational self. And then you have here, surrender, okay? So you're surrendering to the power of your path, to the beauty of this moon, to the guidance of your elders, of your ancestors, of your sacred wisdom and your sacred power. You move forward. And your hard work pays off. I mean, you have a strong Capricorn influence here, okay? Because you have the Capricorn new moon, you have the Capricorn full moon. So you have the strong influence of Capricorn and your hard work pays off, your dedication pays off, your sense of bringing, you know, this, this determination forward, okay? This very kind of earthly grounded determination forward absolutely is working for you. And you see that your hard work pays off. And as your hard work pays off, the full moon in Gemini says, the answers you need are coming. They're coming. They're going to speak to you in dualities. All right? So you either see things start to repeat themselves. Okay? You'll see patterns within things. Two times is going to be very important for you. All right? So there's something here where the answers come. And you will know the answers are coming because you'll get two signs. You'll, you'll see things in, in pairs. And that's going to be really beautiful. And it moves you to a new romantic cycle. So the new moon in Libra moves you to this new romantic cycle. And you have the strong Libra presence here. So it's not just a romantic love cycle. right? So that's what we usually think of when we think of new romantic cycles. But this is a new romantic cycle of life. This is falling in love with your life, your soul, yourself, your passion, your power, your beauty. And it's extraordinary. And it brings a balance to you. Hold to your vision. Don't let go of your dreams. It's so easy to let go of our dreams. It is. It is the world laughs at us or, you know, it seems that you're never getting anywhere. It's, it's so hard. It's so overwhelming. Do not let go of your dreams. They are planted inside of you for a reason. Balancing spirituality and practicality. Well, that's just part of your life. It's part of Pisces life too. We have Pisces full moon right here. But it's part of your life. To balance the practical and the spiritual. To feel fulfilled in both avenues. And to live this powerful life that you, that was spoken over you, ordained over you, before you were even born. Embrace the power of it. Embrace the mystery of it. So much in this world does not need to be known. And yet we try to figure out it all. Don't try to figure it out. Let things happen. Let them unfold. Your subconscious message from the tarot starts with the Two of Pentacles. You can be so busy balancing things, the spiritual and the practical, okay? what you're trying to achieve, your dreams and your realities, you know, everything, okay? So busy balancing that you forget to balance yourself and you don't realize that you're standing on this crickety old bridge that isn't helping anything. First, balance you. First, remember that you matter. Embrace that balance of truth. As you do so, okay, you have sweetness coming into your life as you balance, as you embrace a calm. Okay? Know that as you are balancing, as you're finding this balance, emotions can run very high. And it can feel overwhelming. It really can. And then your subconscious, your next subconscious message from the tarot is the seven of pentacles. Be mindful of what you are harvesting. 
Here he is cutting away the ivy. And remember, ancient Celts believed that ivy was stronger than the mightiest oak because ivy could fell an oak. It could. It can crumble a house, too. What ivy does when it grows on a tree is it plants its roots inside that tree and it sucks the life from the tree. It looks very pretty while it's doing it, yes, but it's still doing it. Just like when ivy grows up a house, it sticks its roots into the mortar that holds the house together and it slowly and steadily pushes the mortar apart so that the bricks become less stable or whatever becomes less stable. So here you have that acknowledgement and you have beauty coming. You have the beginning of a rainbow right here as you tend to what needs to be tended to. As you almost like remove the poison. You tend to the, the crops. You tend to what's important. Take care of it, mind it. You will see that things grow much more beautifully because you were there and because you nourished it. This then leads you to the subconscious Luna message, which is will. And my gosh, Scorpio, where there's a will, there's a way. And you have a magnificent will. Don't veer from your course. And then finally, your last subconscious message is the energy is gaining momentum. The energy of your purpose, your passion, your power is gaining momentum. Believe in it and believe in you. All right, Scorpio. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe.